Hello and welcome to the Met Office 10 day trend. When I say that temperatures will be returning back to around average over the next few days, well, that means that some places will turn colder, some places will turn milder. And that's because we've had such an incredible temperature contrast so far this week. Take Tuesday, for example. We started the day with minus nine Celsius in rural Oxfordshire, well below freezing across southern parts of the UK. But by the afternoon, temperatures climbed close to 16 Celsius in Aberdeen. Now, the mild air in the north was carried by southwesterly winds, and those southwesterlies travelled over the hills of Scotland, dried out, warmed out, and led to a fern effect. That's why we saw 16 Celsius, a very localised high temperature there, but quite widely 12 Celsius across northern parts of the UK, whilst in some parts of England and Wales, temperatures stayed in the low single figures at their highest by Tuesday afternoon. Now, the southwesterlies in the north have brought milder air, but the south has been unaffected so far this week by those winds. We've had light winds, an area of high pressure, and as a result, the cold air that was carried southwards from the Arctic last week has become stagnant across southern parts of the UK. That's why we've seen such cold air lingering here. But some changes are currently occurring. A cold front is crossing the country through Wednesday. Now, as you'd expect, that cold front is bringing colder air to the northern half of the UK. The wind's changing from southwesterlies to northwesterlies. But as you might not expect, it's bringing milder air to the south. It's clearing the low cloud, the fog, during the rest of Wednesday and into Thursday. But it also clears that stagnant, very cold air at the surface, mixes the air up and returns most of the UK back to more typical temperatures. So it's not going to be as mild in the north. It's not going to be quite as cold in the south. We're not losing the frost, though. It will be still a chilly start for many on, Wednesday, on Thursday because we've cleared that cloud. We've got clear spells. And so in some places, temperatures dipping a degree or two below freezing. Not, not widely uh, well below freezing that we've seen in the south. And we'll see a return to frost for Scotland and Northern Ireland with temperatures not far from freezing here as well. A bit more cloud coming into the east and that will remain the case into the afternoon with one or two showers. But actually for many, Thursday's looking like a dry and bright day. The best of the sunshine will be in the west and temperatures up and down the country back to around average for the time of year, six to eight Celsius. No longer will we see that stark temperature contrast. The lightest winds and the clearest skies will be across uh, Northern Ireland, Western Scotland, Northwest England. And that's where we're likely to see the frost and fog as we start off Friday, although a touch of frost is possible further south as well. A chilly start for many once again, but again, a bright start to the day with high pressure in charge and very little rainfall across the UK. Decent sunny spells, six or seven Celsius in the south, a little bit colder compared with Thursday, but turning milder in the northwest of Scotland, but also turning breezier and more damp as a weather front approaches. This again is a cold front. It's going to bring a spell of rain into the north of Scotland on Friday night. And as that uh, travels south, well, it's going to run into this area of high pressure and fizzle out. So the rain tending to become light and patchy across central areas on Saturday. A lot of cloud associated with this. The sunniest skies will be in the far south once any early fog and frost clear. And in the far north as well, we'll see brighter conditions return behind the front, but otherwise uh, largely cloudy if mostly dry day on Saturday. Not entirely dry, there will be some light outbreaks of rain associated with the front. But really, it's this area of high pressure that is going to dominate things through the next few days. That high sitting to the west of the UK and keeping the jet stream well to the north of the UK. So low pressure and weather fronts tending to travel on a northward path to the north of the UK, but occasionally coming down far enough to affect parts of northern Scotland in particular. And that's certainly the case on Sunday. You can see these weather fronts brushing northern Scotland to bring some rain or showers. <clears throat> and the isobars tightening up as well, so becoming breezier across many parts of the UK, but particularly windy later Sunday in the far north. So if we look at the wind gust graphic, that shows it nicely. Saturday's a day of light winds for most. Then these weather fronts come through on Sunday. The isobars tighten up. And this colour corresponds to 50 to 60 mile per hour wind gusts for the far north, especially around exposed coasts and hills. But with that cold front in the far north, we'll also see some rain at times. Further south, Sunday, mostly again a dry day, some brightness coming through and uh, temperatures at around average for England and Wales. 
whilst those temperatures actually are trending upwards for Sunday across Scotland and Northern Ireland. Particularly again, if we get a bit of a fern effect, it'll be very mild for eastern Scotland, for example. Nevertheless, the cold front then travels south. Some very strong winds on Sunday night, uh, gales or severe gales for a time for Shetland and Orkney, along with showers. The front, though, fizzles out as it comes south into central areas, so not much rain on it. It's running again into high pressure and weakening. So for Monday, that high pressure building back again, and for many, it's a largely dry day. Take a look at this, though, this low pressure, bringing some very wet and windy weather into uh, Iceland. And so the benefit, if you'd like to call it that, of the uh, high pressure to the southwest of the UK is it is keeping the jet stream to the north of the country and keeping the storm track to the north at the moment. But it's also likely to continue to be the case into the first half of next week. Higher pressure generally dominating things to the southwest, keeping low pressure systems to the far north. Of course, for the north of Scotland, that does mean that it will often be wet and windy, quite changeable here. But any weather fronts that sink south across the UK will fizzle out as they run into high pressure. So a dry or predominantly dry seven days to come for many parts of the UK. But if you are towards the north, especially northern Scotland, there will be some rain and wind at times. Then the majority of the computer model output indicate roughly similar things for the second half of next week, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. The influence of that high pressure starting to wane, but still to the south of the UK. The jet stream starting to come a little further south to bring the influence of these areas of low pressure and their weather fronts a little further south. But still the general theme of drier towards the south with lighter winds and a touch of frost by night, whilst towards the north, that's where we're going to see wetter and windier weather, so much more changeable, for example for northern parts of Scotland compared with southern parts of England. Another consequence of this high and this low shifting positions is that we're going to see the winds change, less from a northwesterly and more from a southwesterly direction, and that will actually lead to milder air across the UK. And that's shown up nicely by this temperature trend graph. This is for a middle part of the UK for the next couple of weeks. Could have chosen anywhere, it's a similar trend after the next couple of days for most parts of the UK. And you probably know how these things work by now. The red line here indicates the average for the time of year. The blue line indicates the average minimum temperature for the time of year. And the boxes indicate the range of likely values for each day going out to the next couple of weeks. So that's up to the 8th of February in this case. And the bigger the box is, the greater the range of likely values, the more uncertainty there is. But what you can see is that after a brief dip in temperatures below average on Friday and Saturday, as we see that uh, ridge of high pressure, the lighter winds, the frosty nights, well, most of these boxes are above the blue and the, the red line, so above average by day and by night for most of these boxes. And so actually, if anything, through next week, things are going to be turning a bit milder, and we're likely to see temperatures at or above average, both by day and by night, but that wouldn't entirely rule out the chance of overnight frosts in some places, particularly towards the south where we get some lighter winds and clearer skies at times. So no sign of a big freeze occurring. In fact, the very cold weather that we've seen during recent days, well, that is coming to an end in the south. Temperatures and the weather back closer to average for the time of year.